Okay, we're back with part two of the American Revolution. Mr. Pulley here with you. The actual sort of fighting of the American Revolution and our struggle to Saratoga and get a victory to get the French to come out openly on our side. At New York, there's a big defeat for Washington and uh, his troops. Uh, they are outnumbered 32,000 to 23,000, and the British hope that they can slowly intimidate Washington in, into surrender. Uh, i got to realize the guy that got us into the French Indian War in the first place, and they don't regard him that highly, actually. Um, we have untrained and poorly equipped colonists uh, are defeated, and Washington's left with about 8,000 men, mostly because their enlistments were only for about three months for the most part, and they were up. They went back home to harvest or whatever it was they were going to do. Um, he leads a surprise raid on Trenton at night where he uh, ambushes a bunch of uh, drunk and hungover Hessians uh, and gets a victory, which is useful because it rallies spirits and gets him reenlistments he needs for his army. Moving on here, Philadelphia is defeated. Uh, the colonial capital city, the British break through from an attempt to stop them by taking the city at the Battle of Brandywine. Uh, this is bad news again for us. Again, this is our capital at the time. Uh, Washington attacks the uh, British camp at Germantown and in the fog and the smoke, confused Americans fire on each other and this ends up being a British victory, okay? Washington needs a victory badly if he's gonna get support, especially from the French who he's hoping for. They've been giving us stuff on the side, but he needs outright, you know, on our side kind of support. General Burgoyne, this is a guy with a grand plan. He's a British general with his plan to split off New England. He sees New England as being the hotheads that caused this whole revolution. If I can split them off from the rest of the colonies and capture them, the other folks will say, let's just give up because the troublemakers that got us into this they're all captured anyway. Well, it comes down from the Great Lakes in Canada, uh, a long travel in the wilderness with cannons and all his champagne and clothing and everything else along with him, because he's Gentleman Jim. Uh, this is a problem for him. They get bogged down and they're harassed almost the entire way. After several crash clashes, uh, Washington surrounds the British at Saratoga because they've been delayed. Uh, and after this, the British war strategy changes. We now stay pretty much on the coast. Uh, keep our troops to the coast where they can be supplied by ship as opposed to overland because they realize we can't supply them overland. This is the victory that uh, we've been hoping for. The French now openly support the Americans who then retreat to Valley Forge where 2,000 of them die for lack of supplies and cold weather. <laughs> now the Europeans come to the rescue and we're most familiar with the French, of course, the Marquis de Lafayette. They send uh, ships, weapons, and money, all of which we need. Of course, their goal here is to humiliate their old enemy, the British, uh, from the uh, historic Seven Years uh, War, but also from the Hundred Years War as well. This is going to cause trouble at home later and lead almost be a direct cause of the French Revolution later on. Now, there are some other Americans, including Germans like Friedrich von Steuben, who trained Americans to fight in a traditional European manner, which is how we actually win the war. I know, but Mr. Pulley, we're always fighting at guerrilla warfare. That's why we're good. The Minutemen ready at a minute's notice. That's true, and we use that in some cases, but we feel that if we don't fight in a traditional European manner, we'll be seen as having stolen our independence, and that won't work. And, of course, there are other Europeans like the uh, Cashman Pulaski, who those of us in Illinois know because we used to have that day off. Okay, the British begin uh, trying to go through the south here. They're attacking port cities in the south. They take valuable goods and use the ports to attack French ships in the West Indies, uh, trying to take the fight uh, to the French to get them out of the war. Uh, they take Charlestown in South Carolina and 5,500 American prisoners. Uh, we, of course, know that as Charleston today. Okay. Cornwallis moves out of Charlestown on the attack and has a victory at Camden and sets up force across Fort Carolina, South Carolina. But as he moves north, he's being harassed the entire way. If you've seen uh, the movie The Patriot with um, you know, uh, Heath Ledger and uh, Mel Gibson, that's what we're talking about here. These guys harass him and try to slow them down so he can't meet up with his troops. So the English, or the, excuse me, the American colonial forces can rally their troops together for a big major battle, which will happen at the Battle of Cowpens. Okay, the Battle of Cowpens is usually uh, stated as this big battle where outnumbered Americans win this victory. Well, they're not outnumbered, but it is a great American victory. In fact, the troops numbers are about exactly equal, but 
as opposed to a full complement of British regulars, uh, we've got literally uh, local militia who basically we know will fire one shot and run away, and then the uh, other guys who we know will fire maybe one or two shots before they run away, and then it's our other troops. And what he does is he brilliantly has the, these guys do this, and the British have one charge or driven back, the second charge or driven back, and then by the time they finally get through, they're at their, their best trained uh, colonial soldiers, and this becomes this great American victory. Cornwallis will later win, but in doing so in other battles, it cripples his army, his strength. You know, you win, but it comes at a big price for him. He moves to Yorktown near Jamestown in Virginia to rest. Uh, he's going to move north and join other troops, but that's not what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, the American and the French will work together, and at Yorktown on a peninsula with a small escape strip where Cornwallis has unwittingly put himself with no way, real way out except by sea. Uh, the two British fleets cut off uh, the British, two French fleets cut off the British fleet and bombard the British troops and outnumber two to one. The British on October 17th, 1781 are forced to surrender here in, inaccurately depicted in one of my favorite paintings. So the thing I like about this is um, Cornwallis is a little embarrassed. He calls in sick that day, uh, so he sends his second in command. And so military uh, rules stipulate that if he sends his second in command, uh, Washington sends his second in command. So we won't see actually Cornwallis and Washington here, but they're second in commands turning over swords. It's a nice painting, though. Okay, peace and becoming a symbol for the rest of the world, I guess. Um, what we see here is the French and even the uh, Sp Spanish had joined the fight here. The Americans demand recognition of our independence before any uh, peace negotiations can go on here. And that's going to be a bit of a, a snaffle, uh, snafu in the uh, process there. It takes a while, but John Jay, or John Adams excuse me, and Ben Franklin are on our sides, who you probably both know, uh, former president and great American uh, patriot. But also John Jay who we may not know, goes on to become the first Supreme Court Justice, finally resulting in the Treaty of Paris in 1783, which officially ends the war. But there are future problems, okay? The British won't protect native allies, uh, which is going to be a problem. There's no timeline to evacuate British forts that are in the areas west of the Appalachians, between the Appalachians and the Mississippi River. And British creditors and loyalists can sue for payments and damages. And British troops and many loyalists leave the country. But we still see a problem of stopping American ships and impressing the sailors into service on British ships, saying that they used to be British uh, sailors who had mutinied and run away. Well, that's not the case, but that will lead to future problems for us. It's the War of 1812.